This is a Midori Traveller's Notebook. This is a passport size Midori Traveller's Notebook. This isn't a Midori Traveller's Notebook. This is my own version of the Traveller's Notebook. And it comes in a size which accommodates uh, standard field notes or moleskin sized um, booklet. Today I'm going to show you how to make versions of these in any size for yourself. First you're going to need some leather. Here's the leather that I'll be using today. It's relatively thin. Um, for best results you need to use leather that's between 2mm and 3mm thick. This is probably thinner even than 2mm, so this is going to be quite a floppy one, but I quite like that. What you're going to have to do is mark out um, your leather uh, before you start cutting. And I'm a big fan of the old adage that one should measure twice and cut once. In order to help me, I've made some templates which I can use to draw around, cut around, to make sure that my leather is always exactly the right size. Let's have a look at each of them. First of all, this is, if you want to make the very small one, the passport size traveller's notebook. You'll need a piece that's 132mm tall and 200mm wide. If you want to make the field note size, or moleskin sized, Traveller's Notebook, you'll need a piece of leather that's 210mm wide and 150mm tall. If you want the full size one, you're going to need a piece that's 215 tall and 255 wide. Today, this is what we're going to be making. We're going to be making a full size one. Now, if you're only going to make one of them, you probably don't want to make one of these cardboard templates, but <clears throat> what you absolutely have to do is make sure that your measurements are absolutely accurate um, and I would recommend using a set square just to make sure that your piece, the piece that you cut, is absolutely square because if it isn't, um, that's really going to show up when you're using the finished piece. So I'm going to go onto the back of the leather. I'm going to find a point at which to cut out um, my leather piece, uh, staying fairly close to the edge if I can, but remember I do actually want a squared edge so I'm not going to go right to the very edge. Now what you can do at this point is you can draw around uh, the template, but what I tend to do is just draw at the actual corners, because I can then connect those lines up with a ruler. Now I'm laying down quite a big, thick and bold line so that you can see it here on the video, but if you're doing it yourself, by all means be a little more delicate and subtle. So that when I take that away, <coughs> excuse me, you can see the four corner marks there fairly clearly. And I'm going to take a steel ruler and make sure it is steel or aluminium or something that's fairly sturdy. <coughs> and a sharp Stanley knife, and this really does need to be sharp. And I'm going to cut out the piece of leather. You're obviously going to want to make sure when you do this that you're using a nice thick cutting mat to protect your desk or your work surface.
and there we are. I think not quite along this side. here in this corner but we've pretty much um, released that piece of leather the importance of a sharp knife is uh, hopefully apparent now that's going to make an absolutely lovely uh, binder cover it's it looks a little bit creased at the moment because it's been lying folded up but that will soon come out uh, when the thing's in use. That's going to make an absolutely great cover. Now next we're going to punch some holes in this to fit the elastic. Now at this point having gone to the lengths of very carefully cutting out a nice square piece you really want to take your time and make sure that this is done exactly right you're going to look for the exact center now the exact center is at about in this case 12 12 and a half 12 12.8 centimeters roughly going to make quite a prominent mark there and then I'm going to do exactly the same at the other end. So again it's at about 12.8. Now what I'm going to do is just lightly draw a line down the middle of that. And if I fold along that line you'll see that that's pretty much dead centre of the piece. Now it's along that line that I'm going to knock my holes in the piece of leather. And in order to do that I need um, a leather punch. Now leather punches are fairly freely obtainable. Um, this one uh, is a particularly small hole uh, and that's exactly what we need and <clears throat> along this line <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I'm going to be making two holes at the top two holes at the bottom and one hole in the middle now the hole in the middle is for the elastic loop that holds the piece together uh, if you want one that's just like a traditional uh, traditional Midori, you'd be punching here so that the elastic loop comes out of the back um, but I prefer it to come out of the spine so that's where I'm going to be knocking um, my hole for the loop. So first let's do the top and bottom. So getting about half a centimetre in and it's really important that you do this punch from the inside to the out because these holes are somewhat conical so you want the smaller edge of the hole to be on the outside of the piece so that it's less visible so a bit of a sound tap there's one hole another one maybe a centimeter lower okay there it is and then the same thing at the bottom of the piece And then again a little higher. And then I'm going to see where the centre is. So we're talking about 210, so 100 and, oh no, sorry, 215, so about there somewhere between ten and a half and eleven is where I want to be making my central hole so let me do that now 
Okay, now those holes look quite big here on the reverse side, but if I turn this over, you'll notice that actually they're pretty unobtrusive on that side, and, and once that there's some thread in there, some elastic thread, they'll be even less noticeable. Okay, so it's time for the elastic thread. Um, you can need some elastic thread that is about um, a millimetre thick. Uh, here's some, it looks like this, obviously. Um, you're also going to need an embroidery needle or any fairly strong needle with a reasonably big hole. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be too big, the eye of this needle, because we're not going to be threading that through it. Oh no. What we're going to be doing is fashioning... Um, a needle loop. Now all this is, is it's an embroidery needle that's been threaded with a piece of quite strong cotton thread that I've then tied into a loop so that I've now got a super big eye for my needle. And that's how I'm going to be threading the elastic through this cover. Now where I start is on the inside on the hole, not the one right at the edge, but the one next to it. Go out through there and pull the piece of elastic through, then come back through the hole that's right next to the edge. Okay, what you'll now see is that I've got a piece of elastic that goes from the inside to the outside and then back on the inside again. And you'll probably find that while you're doing this, it slips out of the loop at least once. Certainly that's my experience. But it's quite easy to pop it back in and carry on, which is what I shall do. Next, you want to go right to the end hole at the other end of the piece and go through from the inside to the outside. And then finally, for this piece, go back in through the hole just next to it. So we can unthread that now. And you'll notice that what you've got is you've got a long length on the inside, which is what we're going to put the main booklet through. And these shorter edges, these shorter ends, which I'm going to tie together. Now, you do want to get quite a bit of tension on this elastic um, to the point that it will want to fold up like this. It won't want to fold up once it's in use, but actually if you leave this too loose, then in use it's just going to flop about um, the book once the booklets are inside it. So tight a good firm knot here. Um, a reef knot or a granny knot, um, either would do. Uh, if you've been a scout you'll know the difference, but if not it really doesn't matter. Just think of it as a double knot. And then just snip those long ends off. With scissors um, and you're good to go. Now notice how the thing just wants to curl up now. Um, and that's fine, that's what it's supposed to want to do. Once we've got a booklet in here, that's not going to be an issue anymore. If you're using thicker leather than this, you might find that it's a bit more resistant to that curl anyway. But let me put a book inside, and you can see the difference that makes. Okay, here's one of my uh, homemade booklets. This one's um, an address book. I'm just going to find the central part, put it through the long piece of elastic, pull it into the middle there, um, and then you can see that sits quite comfortably inside the uh, traveller's notebook, uh, which now doesn't want to curl up um, into a ball. But if I take it out for now, because there's clearly more work to do with the cover. 
So you'll remember that we put this second hole here, and for the second hole, uh, we're going to make uh, a fastening loop. So I think, in fact, there's probably enough in one of these off cuts to do this. Back to the loop needle again. <coughs> This is a rather fiddly job, I'm afraid, because the thread tends to kind of twist together a bit. <coughs> Put that through so that you've got half of it on each side. Um, now I'm going to do this kind of by feel, because I've done it before and I know the right tension, but tie this knot loosely so that you can um, experiment and if it's not right first time you can you can undo it easily but I'm just going to tie a, a knot in this elastic at what I think is probably going to be the right level of, of of tension that's yeah that's about right I think that will be at rest about two-thirds of the way across it may be a little bit loose but we'll see so what I'm going to do is thread this through the hole from the inside to the outside. Um, now at this point, if you had used a needle with a big eye, uh, you'd be in a bit of trouble because there's absolutely no way to get your needle back. Um, so what I do with this loop of thread um, is simply cut it, uh, which releases the needle, uh, and I'll need to make another one of those uh, next time. So <coughs> I wouldn't cut these off just immediately. I would check that you've got the tension of the elastic closure loop right first. So let's put a booklet back in the thing and uh, and see how that how that feels. Uh, yeah, that feels about right to me. So I can go ahead and snip there. Okay, and that's the main elastics for your Traveller's Notebook. Now you could end there, that's a finished piece, um, but I like to do a couple more enhancements uh, that I'll show you in a moment. Now when you compare my Traveller's Notebook to a regular Midori one, you'll notice that the Midori has nice rounded corners. There is a way to do that uh, and whilst it would be absolutely lovely if there were a, a leather tool that would do that uh, easily, I, I haven't found such a thing and I don't think it exists. I've found a way to do it and it involves one of these, a metal washer, it has to be metal rather than plastic, and um, the ever popular Stanley knife. And the way that you do this, there's one that I did earlier, um, <coughs> is to carefully place the washer exactly in the corner so that it's touching the edge both sides and then hold it there very firmly and then with your knife go in and make a series of cuts working all the way round. Now you're not dragging this knife you are pressing it. That's going to make a much neater and cleaner cut to the leather. Now it's a job that requires a little bit of patience if you want a really good finish. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look, let's see how that is on the, on the right side and yeah that's a really really nice corner. So you can go ahead and do that to all four corners. One of the really attractive features of the Midori Traveller's Notebook is this little chap, the bookmark, uh, which makes it easy to find a, a particular page in your notebook. And you know people hang little charms uh, off the bottom of it as well. So that's reliant on this tin clip chap here, um, which I, I don't use. 
uh, in, in my version. Firstly, I find that when you open the thing up, this just sort of gets in the way, uh, and I, I just don't find it necessary. Um, so it's quite difficult to duplicate that functionality without the tin clip, but there is a way. You need to get hold of some of this stuff. It's uh, it's not cotton twine, which is what Midori use. I find that very difficult to get hold of. This is from a craft shop, and this is a leather cord, in fact, and it's, well, less than half a millimetre thick, which is what you need, but incredibly strong, um, which is just what you're going to need. Now, what you need to do is thread that through the existing holes that you've got in the Midori cover, and let me show you what I mean. I've already started the job um, by fashioning another looped needle. I've taken that loop in through the bottom hole of the top set of two. So let me just bring the end of that piece of leather all the way through, and then we're going to go back in through the very top hole. Now, this is quite a small hole, so it will need a little bit of um, encouragement. There you go. Sometimes the thread snaps, which is very frustrating, but what can you do? So if I just pull that all the way through, we've then got this hanging arrangement here. Now, what we're going to do, and it's quite useful to leave this long for the time being, is that this section here is going to end up, this long bit here is going to end up being the, the bookmark itself. Um, so what I want to do is to tie a knot so that that bit ends up facing upwards. In fact, now that I think about it, the best way to do it is to start with a short bit at this end and to tie a decent reef knot. So, if you don't know how to do a reef knot, it's important that it is a reef knot, by the way. Right, over, left, under, and pull. And then left, over, right, and under. And pull. And then hopefully now you can see why that had to be a reef knot, because it means that the long end ends up facing upwards, where it will then act as a bookmark. Cut off the short edge to leave that nice and tidy. And then the bookmark itself can come down inside the booklet, come a little way out at the bottom, snip it off. Now you can either tie a charm to that, or you can just put a nice little loose knot at the end to give it a bit of a, a texture and some grit. And that is your bookmark. I'm going to demonstrate one further step that you can take now to personalise your notebook. And you'll notice that what I've done here is I've clamped um, a straight edge across the very edge of my notebook. Uh, and the reason why will become apparent fairly soon. Um, we're going to be using these. Um, this is a Leathercraft tool. Uh, you can get these on eBay. They're fairly freely available. Um, if you live in North America, you can go to a Tandy Leather store and, and pick these up. Uh, if you're in the UK, I think we have one branch of, uh, of Tandy Leather in Northampton. So look it up by all means. But as I say, they're available on eBay. And what you can do is you can use this tool to personalise, to type your name, or to punch your name rather, on pretty much any kind of leather. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop my name on this notebook. <clears throat> so I'll start off, there are three letters in my name, there's an R, an A and a Y. Um, so I'm going to start off with the R, attach the R to the punch piece, 
and make sure and really check very, very carefully that uh, you position this properly on the leather. And then bring it right up to the straight edge that you've clamped in place. That will make sure you get a nice straight line, uh, which is incredibly important, I think, in this. Then with a the rubber mallet, a few knocks. You can see there, hopefully I've left the impression of an R. Now I'm going to change the end. I'm going to put um, an A on the end of my tool. Again, make sure it's oriented properly. Line it up carefully next to the R. Make sure it's right up against the straight edge and bam. Uh, things will start falling off your desk when you do this, by the way. And then finally, um, I think we'll have, where is it? There it is. I think we'll have a letter Y to finish that off. Yes, that's going the right way. Make sure the spacing looks about right, and then and there we go, there's my name. So, let's unclamp all of this. Take my bookmark away. You can see I've now got quite a nice uh, traveller's notebook which is personalised to me and which goes very nicely with a smaller one that I made earlier. Hopefully you've enjoyed these videos and you'll use them as inspiration to have a go at making your own traveller's notebook which really is quite straightforward to do.